Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning and Marine. In this video I'm going to be doing uh, or installing a distributor and uh, this will be part three of my series on uh, replacing the Thunderbolt ignition with the Delco EST electronic ignition system. So for starters, um, I'm going to take the distributor cap off. I'm going to leave the wires connected because I, uh, I want to have them in the right order when I put them on the new distributor cap, but I have to re remove the distributor cap so that I can see which uh, direction the rotor is pointing so I can put it back at top dead center. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the distributor cap and then uh, I'll uh, restart the camera when I get to that stage. Okay, the distributor cap is now removed and I also took the air cleaner um, cover and air cleaner off the carburetor just to make some more room. So the rotor is pointing towards the back right now and it needs to point towards me, the front, because the, the uh, front would be top dead center on number one cylinder. Because I'm putting in a new distributor and uh, so you have to time it just like you would if you were putting it in from, the, from scratch. So I'm going to turn the motor over and uh, get the rotor to point straight ahead. Um, instead of using the key, this, is right, this right here is your starter solenoid and this terminal right here is what comes from your ignition switch to, to uh, crank the motor. So if I take 12 volts and touch it to that, so that's, this is 12 volts here. This is, this is a solenoid. So you got 12 volts here all the time and this goes down to the starter. So if I put a jumper from here to there, it'll bump the motor over. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, by the way, um, after I do that, I should disconnect the battery, the positive off the battery, just to be safe. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna know that every wire I disconnect, I'm gonna think twice and, and decide what it is and know that it either has 12 volts on it or it doesn't. And I'll, I'll describe that in the video too. But uh, really to be safe, you should disconnect the battery um, after you get the motor turned over facing forward. Okay, as you can now see, I've got the rotor pointing pretty much, the number one cylinder was pointed about right there. So I've got the number, the rotor pointed right there. So this distributor is now, or the, uh, the engine is now at top dead center. And uh, if you look down through there, you can actually see the mark. It's just a tad past the, uh, that white mark right there is a tad past top dead center. That's close enough. So as long as I get the new distributor in that approximate location, I'll be okay. So um, one other thing, I uh, also disconnected the two distributor, the, uh, these two wires first, so it wouldn't try to start. I don't think it would, but um, sometimes the starter sound will back feed the ignition during cranking and it'll crank, it'll start up sometimes. But um, I disconnected that to be, to be sure it wouldn't try to fire. So, um, plus the distributor cap was off, so it wouldn't fire it anyway. But anyway, um, I'm about to uh, loosen, I'm gonna loosen the bolt down there, that bolt right there. Take that out and then uh, or actually just loosen it, slide the clamp back and then lift the distributor out of the engine. So I'll do that now. All right, the distributor is now installed. I've got it sitting in, uh, all the way down flush with the manifold and I tightened that bolt just a little bit. It's not uh, super tight, but it's enough to keep it from uh, twisting without a, lot of, uh, without a little bit of force. So you can see the rotor is sort of pointed straight forward towards me. And that's where the other, the uh, rotor came out. The engine hasn't been moved at all, so the rotor's pointing in approximately the same location. And all that means is that I can, uh, the distributor cap has no numbers for which one is number one. So I can arbitrarily pick number one based on where the rotor's pointing. So let's see if I can get this cap back on here. There we go. So now the cap is in, and it's obvious that I'm gonna pick that post right there to be my number one. So it goes one, six, five, four, three, two, and one. That's the firing order. You, uh, you always go in the direction ro the distributor rotates in the firing order. So this will be number one. Um, and, I'll, and again, I'll have to probably adjust the timing. Uh, obviously, I'll have to adjust the time with the timing light once I get it running. But for now, the distributor is installed. So next, I'm going to install the coil, and then I'll start the wiring, uh, dismantling the wiring from the Thunderbolt and wiring up this new distributor. All right, um, I'm losing light, but I think you can see it. I think this camera enhances the light. So I'm about to install the new ignition coil. I've assembled it with the bracket here. And um, I'm gonna basically put it where the old coil was. Seems the only logical place to put it. And we use that bolt right there to hold this under this new coil in. So I'm about to move this old coil and I'm gonna cut the wires here. I'm gonna cut this gray wire. And I'll cut this purple wire. 
this purple wire has 12 volts on it when the ignition key is on, but when the ignition key is off, there's no voltage here. So I'm okay cutting that wire right now. I'm gonna cut them back to about right here. And then I'll uh, splice them into the new coil, into the new, I'll splice them into the new coil harness. All right, I've now mounted the ignition coil. I uh, used the uh, same bolt that held the old coil. I mounted on the back of the cylinder head on the uh, port side. And uh, I only use one bolt because the bolt pattern of that bracket won't allow use of two bolts. So the, it's very rigidly attached to the back of the head. And uh, I'm now about to uh, start uh, installing the uh, wiring and the connectors for the wiring. So next thing you'll see is uh, I'll wire up this coil to the distributor and uh, wire up the coil to the harness. So basically, as I was stating before, I cut the uh, purple. I cut the purple and the uh, gray wire from the old coil. I'm just gonna get the hand on it. I don't know why it's so hard to grab a wire, but there it is. So anyway, here's your purple and the gray. It came off the old coil. I'm gonna put bullet connectors here. I'm gonna put um, female connectors on both of these because if, if this has if the purple wire has 12 volts I don't want a, a male bullet connector bare metal touching anything so that's why I use the females on the hot side but I'll put uh, bullet connectors on this and uh, and then I'll uh, install the coil harnesses all right continue with the uh, Delco EST installation to replace the Thunderbolt ignition I've taken my harnesses and I put uh, bullet connectors on them so this is the uh, Plus 12 volts coming to your coil. That's your tack lead. I've got uh, uh, bullet connectors made up on, on the ends of these wires. I'll be crimping the gray wire to this white wire and I'll be crimping the purple wire to the pink wire here. The purple will go on this, this bullet connector, and it, which is a female, and then the gray will go to this female also. And uh, should be able to tell the difference because one's red and one's blue. That's on the power side. Um, on your... Uh, this this is uh, so this is functioning as both the set timing tool and the uh, shift kill switch. So I've got bullet connectors here. When I want to do the set timing tool, I connect this terminal with that one, and that forms my loop. And then there will be 12 volts on this, and that's what I'll do to set my timing. When I want to use this as a shift kill switch, I disconnect this from that, leave them unconnected, and then when the uh, shift kill switch turns on it will apply 12 volts here and since there will be no the uh if you once you apply 12 volts the signal coming back on this wire won't be there since it's not connected and that will kill the ignition so this sir like i said before this serves as both your set timing tool and your shift kill switch and i'll explain that a little bit more when i get it installed so i'm about to take these harnesses out and install them in the boat all right, I'm running out of light, but I'll try to show you what I've done the best I can. So there's the coil mounted. And like I said in part two, I've got the, the first harness goes off the coil, that uh, pink and white wire, and runs over here and ties into the distributor right there. Right there. And that comes in there. That's what's powering up the module, and it's also what fires the coil. Then I've got the gray connector there that I put on second, and the pink wire is tied into the purple wire that's part of, that was part of the boat harness. That was going to the coil pot. The old coil positive was purple wire, and now the purple wire goes to the new coil pink wire right there and goes to its positive. The gray wire right there is tied. Both of these are, are uh, bullet connectors, not butt connectors. Bullets are easier to put together to me. So the gray wire goes there and is uh, tied into that white wire off that gray connector right there. That's, your, that's what fires this coil and makes it run. That gray wire is also spliced inside this harness to go back to the tachometer at the front of the boat. It also comes up to this the Thunderbolt connector right there, which I will be just, I'm gonna just abandon it in place. I'm gonna pull these connectors off. I'm gonna remove the module. I'm gonna pull the connectors off, fill them with the silicone sealant so nobody tries to put them on again. And leave some of the wires abandoned in the, in the harness. I'll cut some of them and some will be just abandoned right there in the connector. So, the, uh, as far as the power wiring is all done, I can crank the motor up now if I wanted to. Um, before I do that, I need to uh, move the wires from the old distributor cap to the new. I'm about to do that now. Um, the coil wire that came off this thing will not work because this connector here 
will not fit on the new coil, so I have to get a different coil wire. The coil wire has to have this tight connector on both ends. I have one in my shop. I'll install it in a second. So now, like I said, I'm going to move the, the wires off the old distributor and move them to the new distributor in the same order they were before. With that, this terminal right here, right there being number one, it's closest to me. Number one, six, five, four, three, two. All right. Doing that now, and then uh, I'll put the coal wire on, and uh, maybe I'll get this thing started up. All right, I just discovered why they say a new, new set of spark plug wires in the kits. So if you notice how tall, that's the old distributor. If you notice how tall that spark plug wire cap, the, uh, the terminal is, and if you notice how tall it is on the new cap, the old spark plug wires are too tall and they're not fitting down all the way on the new cap. They will, uh, they will go on, but they snap back off when I let them go. So I'm gonna have to go buy a brand new set of uh, six spark plug wires uh, for this for this uh, for this new for this new cap. And uh, the bonus is I'll get a coil wire with it, so nothing nothing lost. So I'll do that. It's too late today to buy another set of wires, so I'm gonna call it a day for now, and I'll finish this installation tomorrow. This is the conclusion of part three. Part four will be me uh, uh, putting the spark plug wires on and uh, showing how to time the engine using the uh, timing tool. Thanks for watching.